Eric. You I see, see me, but it's so. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning. Java Delight will uplift you. Stay tuned. The show is about to begin. Grab your coffee. Stay tuned. The show is about to begin. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brandon Croucher, and I am blessed to be able to start my day not just with the queen of South Africa, the queen of taming sharks, the queen of teaching giraffes how to stretch that extra inch with their neck, but I'm able to spend my morning this wild, wacky Wednesday with all of you, and I am grateful for that. So thank you all for being here today and coming in and starting the day. Miss Ilsa, I think you just lost your internet. Are you okay, sweetie? Can you hear me, Miss Ilsa? I don't think she can hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Elsa, it is good to see you. You are a beautiful soul, and I hope you're doing well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. My name is Brandon Croucher. Today is Whip It Out Wednesday. Woohoo! Bob's favorite day of the week, the Wonder of Women Wednesday. Elsa, how are you? You look like you're back now. Can you hear me? I'm going to take that as a no still. <laughs> oh, well, we tried. So... Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in today. Today's going to be a wonderful day. We have a whole bunch planned. We're going to be doing, we have a guest coming on who writes for Sports Illustrated, even if you're not Whiskey Wednesdays, Wine Wednesdays. I could see you. Can you Can hear you us? Can you see me? Can you? Can you hear me? Because my internet is horrible. It's horrible. So I'm trying my best, guys. <laughs> you're good. Can you hear us? Hello. <laughs> uh, don't worry, guys. I'll do sign language. If nobody knows sign language, it's okay. We can hear you, Elsa, but you can't hear us. It See, this is fun. It, Every... it doesn't show that I'll, we're live. I'll just... It, it does show, show that we're live. live. We are live. <laughs> okay. My computer is so frozen right now. So maybe I must just restart and then we start again. How's that? Can you hear that? There we go. <laughs> I don't know if she can see that comment. There we go. We're starting over. All right. So I'm, seems she cannot hear us. I, I see that. Now, Mama Gotti, I am loving your gamas this morning. You're making coffee, watching the clock count down to hanging with Java. Love it. And then my favorite is not even for a few comments later. Ah, I set my coffee and forgot to plug it in. I hate when that happens. <sighs> Resetting the waiting. That was funny. I literally read that and laughed out loud for real. Uh, Stuart Lone Wolf, good morning. You're saying good morning to Bob. It's welcome to weirdo, all the weirdos to wild, wacky Wednesdays. I love it. Uh, good morning from a very cold northern Colorado. Uh, from there, everybody else is we're just chiming in and all that. How is everybody doing today? What have you been up to? How is your day going are you guys running around? That was that was so my sentiment. Nailed it. Mm, got it. That's my favorite thing to do. Love it. Uh, today's guest is actually going to be really fun for everybody because he's actually a Sports Illustrated writer. But the funny thing is, his writing that he does is not for sports. The writing that he does is 100% just for the people that, like, he's into Terminator. And he's into, oh God, let me just pull it up. I'm going to read the bio because this one got me all excited today. Uh, he wrote a book on Terminator and James Bond. And the name of the book is Will It Be Bach? And His World Never Dies. And guess what? I just thought both of those sounded absolutely incredible. Excuse me. Good titles, great things. 
And I'm a big James Bond fan. With the new James Bond coming out, this couldn't be better. And Mama Gotti, but that's the thing. We won't actually talk sports at all. What we're going to talk about is, bingo, the Terminator He's going to say, is Elsa going to be back? I have no idea. I don't know where she went. Maybe over there. Maybe over there. I don't know. Let's go look for my beach ball. Is that how it sounds? No, that's not how Terminator sounds. Good morning, Mr. Brian Tracy. Good to see you, my friend. I hope you got some sleep. Brian and I were texting the other day, and I had a meeting with Fernando last night, and he was telling me how Brian's going to be driving all night. He only got 30 minutes, three, zero minutes of sleep, and I'm sitting there going like, Brian, you need to go relax, homie. I love you too much to see you putting yourself through that. Like, talk to the hand. <laughs> like... But, like, you need to get some sleep. Sleep is so essential in today's society, and we don't take advantage of what we need to be doing for it. And so many of us are sitting here just loving life, doing what we can, but we miss the fact that we're not actually getting that full REM cycle of sleep. And when you're a truck driver like Brian, it makes it even more difficult because then all of a sudden you're hitting yourself in other ways where all of a sudden you're getting sleep. Uh, yeah, see? See? Sleep. Uh. Brian, you know better than that, bro. You know today is Wednesday. We're getting over the hump of the week. We're starting to be able, what is sleep? <laughs> it would be funny if you spelled that with two Zs. What is sleep? <laughs> but like, he, uh, not safe, buddy. You need sleep, see? And that's the thing. Brian, I'm not criticizing you in any way. It's because we care. Everybody here cares and loves for you. And that's why this community has been built is we literally want to be able to help one another and work is essential. Where do you find this thing called zip zip Elsa? Where do you find sleep? Have you found sleep in your life? She still can't hear us. Can Elsa, hear I can hear you. Can you hear me? And nope. Everything's nope. Hang on, hang on. Where insomnia sucks. I haven't slept more than three hours in six years. Bob, Bob and Brian, you guys need to cuddle up and just hold each other and fall asleep. Nothing else. I'm not implying anything. It's the cuddle Can thing. You that I'm now? Nope. Yes, for sure. But you can't hear us. I can hear you. Why don't you I go back inside? You. You'll have better internet inside, I think. This is fun. Guys, I'm how many on, times I'm on. <laughs> How many times can we get Ilsa stuck? Let's see if we can just keep her. <laughs> oh hell no. <laughs> I told Bob and Brian they need to cuddle and this is the reply I get. Oh hell no. We can hear you now, Ilsa, but we still can't can you? We can see and hear you, but there's nothing else. I can hear you, Elsa. Everybody's just chiming. Guys, tell us where you're coming from. Tell Elsa we're sending her good vibes in South Africa. She's like having troubles with her I internet can today. You. Can you I see can us? You. I can see you as well. I think her stream is a little delayed. So Elsa, give us an idea of how your day's going and I will sit quietly for a second. See, <laughs> my day is wonderful where, where we are. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> that was great. My day, my day has been going late. Internet is I. <laughs> <laughs> so a 45 second delay yeah that's what i counted I was, we're right okay, about so there it, elsa what if you went inside things you can say about your internet that you can't say about your boyfriend <laughs> great one great one you made me laugh that's all i need her her soul her soul D is in and out. Yeah, bad connection. I, I think she needs to just go reset her internet and try dropping, cleaning the modem really quick. 
Oh, she's back again. Let's see if this works. Third time's the charm. Nope. Good morning, Sherry McQueen. It's good to see you here. I, don't know if I have enough cool nightmares without having a thought of hugging a hairy old marine truck driver. Yeah, oh my God. That, I, I can hear you. Hold on, Elsa. You are adorably cracking me up today because you are all like, you're super delayed. Um, let me send you a Facebook message, the Wi-Fi router and computer, then come back. Boop. There we go. That way she fixes it that way and all that. She's getting a message from me. All right, guys, let's jump into today. Good morning, everybody. Uh, while Ilsa fixes that, her internet and sees if, see if that helps it, um, we're going to keep Oh, you're using the internet from inside on her phone. Uh, maybe switch directly to your phone. Boom. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. The weird thing is her and I were together for an hour before the show and no internet problems. The minute we go live, she starts actually having the internet problems. So, But I'm here today. I'm here to love on you guys, here to share great things. Tell me what's going on in Please your Please tell me something's happening. Uh, something's happening. I don't know what that something is, but there's something happening right now. Can you hear me, Elsa? So, guys, tell me some good news. Help us get some good news out to Miss Miss Ilsa. Forget the internet thing. We're going to drop the internet problem, and we're going to just send good vibes, good energy, and love all the way to Miss Ilsa in South Africa while she's dealing with these these struggles this morning of the internet she's really trying hard and i am grateful that ilsa is doing her best to be here and be a part of the community today i know she's trying hard she's frozen again i'll just remove her no worries we're in it together i love that attitude guys so talk to me guys and <laughs> she's sending me private messages it's annoying af and it is connected with a cable even you know what? It happened. Good news. Um, my coffee is finally ready. You know what, Mandy? Or I mean, Mama Gotti? Cheers. Ah, but I'm not drinking coffee. I'm actually drinking green tea. Um, I, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm doing Sober October. And I have to be honest, it's been very unique because I'm a... <clears throat> I make people laugh when I say this. I'm doing Sober October because I actually was feeling like I was smoking too much. I felt like I was using it as a crutch and hiding from things in my life that I wanted to be able to make myself better. And I wasn't able to break through and I was using the cannabis as a crutch to lock myself down in certain areas, which is not healthy in any any capacity. And for me, I wanted to be able to be the best leader I should be for everybody. And that meant looking inside myself, stopping for a second and seeing what things I'm actually holding on to that I need to let go of. Now, am I going to stop smoking cannabis altogether? No, I'll say that because I do enjoy it. But here's the other thing. I'm not going to stop smoking it, but I will stop smoking it for this month to clear my body out. And oh, you've never heard of that. Oh, so I picked cannabis and I picked coffee as my two things I'm getting real I'm getting rid of and the truth is every morning I'm waking up I'm meditating and then I write and I have somebody like CK4 who you guys see in the comments she writes me something to ask myself every morning and I was like okay let's try this again and like every morning I get a question from her uh I'll pick up the slack for you Whew, thank God Bob I'm glad you're there delay. You tell me. This is horrible. Seventeen. I, we're at nineteen second delay. I'm gonna have to start talking again, Elsa. I'm sorry. What if you just log in on your phone? I would write something hateful if I quit smoke, quit coffee. You know what, Jeannie? I 100% know what you mean. And the thing is, the first couple of days of writing, when I started writing, it was one of these things where I'd write and I sent it to her. And she doesn't read my writing with critiques of, well, you're doing A, B, and C wrong. 
she reads it and then takes the sentences I write and then highlights the area where I switched from a positive to a negative so I could start to catch myself. And she tells me, what are you doing? Uh, too delayed. Maybe join us in the comments. Yep. I think that's going to be what it's going to have to be today, Elsa. I'm sorry, sweetie, if your internet's not working. So she's going to try one more thing on her phone. And then if that doesn't work, we're sending her to the comments. And that way we have no more delays. And I'll just screw around with you guys. But I literally am out here today. And what's interesting is that I, I when I say I quit smoking, it's one of these things where I 100%, I enjoyed it. I like smoking. But I also know that when any anxiety kicked in, I would use that as my excuse to go out and smoke. And it, 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 <laughs> I felt a bit like off with her head. And the first few days I started to not smoke, I'll be honest, my anxiety hit the billion, it hit into the stratosphere. I was angry at everything. Um, I want that on. What is the question for tomorrow? Uh, I want, I want in on that. Uh, uh, coffee is my elixir for life, even more so with a little with a little bourbon in it. Ooh. Mama Gotti, the first week is tough. After that, it wasn't a problem for me. Smoked weed for 30 years and quit five years ago without looking back. So my thing is I have goals. I want to meet like Snoop Dogg. And if I meet Snoop Dogg one day or, sorry, uh, Cheech and Chong, or even like there's so many different people out there that are these amazing leaders that brought cannabis and didn't look at it as a negative that I would like to be around and all that. But I don't want to use cannabis as my way of coping. I don't want to use it as a way of just limiting myself. I want it to be that, like, you go out with your friends and you have a drink or two. It doesn't need to be my way of coping through life and letting it be my crutch. And I didn't realize I was doing that until I I felt it on my heart and I started pushing. Um, only with Snoop or while, while I have, <laughs> or, or Willie. Yes! Willie Nelson, but I have the same stipulations. And that's my thing. It, it's it's a boundary that I had to create myself. That doesn't mean it's for you, but it's for me. Uh, smooches or 17. Ooh. But like my thing is, even if you're not a pot smoker, if there was somebody out there that you, that you wanted to do something with, like for me, if I could... If I could swim a lap versus Michael Phelps, I would want to swim a lap versus Michael Phelps. It's it, it, For me, if I could smoke, it'd be with Snoop. What would be something you'd want to do with some celebrity that just nobody else thinks they could do? Uh, this uh, For me, it's Snoop, and I'm not a smoker or anything. I love that. I love it. This month, I've given up sugar and alcohol. Wow. Wow. Mine was coffee and cannabis. I stayed with the C's. Sugar is something that is on my list to start to let go of. Alcohol has never been a dependent for me. Uh, I drink with Mike, and I think that's literally the only person I drink with anymore. Um, everybody else, I I, I, I just don't. I don't know why. I, I've stopped smoke. I've stopped drinking, and it's become a lot more of me being able to focus on me and the drinking was never a big problem. I don't know why. Um, I felt my just say no t-shirt being torn from me when I ordered CBD. See, that's the funny thing. I actually, you want to know the rate that this month I've given up money. <laughs> I didn't know we could give up money, but I appreciate the honesty. Uh, is it the love of money or is it the love of or is it you've given up money like well, you don't have any? Because I feel like that was me for a while there is I gave up money, but I didn't really want to give it up. Um, I hear that. I have Xanax, but I, have, I, I hate swallowing pills. So weed has always been the way to kind of balance myself. But the last few years, I wake up and, ha and want to smoke like a lot and often. It's too much. Not my norm. And see, that's mine. And like that was my thing. And then I'm out here talking to everybody about the light and CBD and why we all need to be doing it and all this stuff. But then the funny thing is, I don't, I, I, and I mean this is like, I failed myself on this. And I don't mean it in a negative way, but if I can't literally open up a pack of CBD and start using it instead of going to get cannabis when my shit hits the fan. And I mean that literally the shit hits the fan for me and my anxieties at a 12. I need to be able to rebalance myself. How can I talk about this if I'm not willing to actually do it? So cutting out cannabis completely was tough. But 
feeling bad about doing CBD, I don't because this is me adding it to something as simple as my coffee, something as well, my tea, because I have my hot tea right here. And it's just simple, easy, done. And truth be told, I love it because I'm noticing a difference in myself. I am seeing that while well, today starting off a unique way with the <laughs> internet problems that Ilsa's having, she literally was on with me for over an hour and then all of a sudden it just got caught, got bad. But like, if I could start my days actually doing it instead of smoking and needing other things and saying I need to do more, I just felt like I'd be able to be a better leader. I'd be able to represent myself to the fullest and that was all I wanted. It's not saying that weed is bad. It's not saying anything people do is like wrong, but it's my balance of myself wasn't proper. And I didn't notice that until I had to stop. The interesting thing is I started dreaming again. Like literally I've had like dreams every night. Uh, my sleep has not just been deeper. I feel rested. My meditations have felt better. This morning when I woke up and I was doing stretching just because my back needed cracked, I, I could feel how clear my breath was. And I mean that as in like, not like, oh, I wasn't coughing, but like I could feel that when I took the time to take a deep breath in and feel it in my stomach and let it out, I, I literally was able to open my heart out and get it out. Um, yeah, uh, I did not dream when I had COVID and not for months after. after uh, I want my back cracked. Jeannie, I'll crack your back. Ask Mike. I am a phenomenal back cracker. I, I wish somebody could crack my back like I crack people's. Uh, this month, I have given up on Brandon picking up on my subtle flirtations. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mike. I'll, I'll do my best to start catching them better, bud. Oh, I want every joint in my body cracked. Oh, my God, Jeannie. Trust me. Uh, you know what the biggest cracking point I've been? People laugh at me when I say this, but I crack my toes and God, does that, it's like the most relaxing thing in the world. It's like <laughs> on your toes. Oh, yeah. What is yours? Uh, moving forward, they will be obvious. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. That kind of makes me nervous. Mike's going to start flirting with me hardcore on here. I'm going to, Mama Gotti, don't antagonize him like that. You have no idea how him and I react. You know, he, he and I start flirting. It might make Bob and <laughs> Bob and Brad. Sorry, it might make Bob and Brian actually start flirting, and I don't mean that. I don't, or cuddling. I'm sorry. All right, Mama Gotti says I'm about to have to order that, and I have to go. I think I'm about about it all the time when I hear you talk about it, but haven't checked it out yet. It takes me forever to make me make my move sometimes, and you know what? I get it. I 100 percent get it. Oh my God, Mike, why you got to do this to me? Grabs the edible underwear. What flavor? What flavor of underwear is it? Good morning, Shauna Jones. Uh, I may have given up a habit of, <laughs> I may have given up my habit of caught into windows. This is going to get good. Morning, Mama Gotti. Mike is satisfying himself having fun. Oh, wow, that came out wrong too. Oh my God. Uh, oh, Elsa's back. Give me a second, Elsa. I have to open up Facebook now. I usually only have the show and the link for the, the person up there, but today we're having these technical difficulties. Let's try it again. By the way, I'm still getting very weird friend requests. Like I got one the other day, it was some dude and he was like, yo, how you doing? And I'm like, I don't know you. And he's like, yeah, you do. And I'm like, how do I know you? Boom, boom, let's try this. Um, Elsa sent, check that out, girl. Uh, hi, you Mandy, great. But they are medicinal. <laughs> I hate you. Because that is perfect in so many ways. Oh, my God. That is great. Grape flavored edible underwear. But they're medicinal. Because they're medicinal, I am not allowed to eat those till next month. I hate to break it to you all. Jay Bird, good morning, my friend. It is good to see you. CK Ford's here. Hello, CK. Sent you the email right before we started today. And I actually asked myself a question today. What has been the change in me that I've seen since I've stopped smoking cannabis and drinking coffee so far this month? I'm six days in, and I'll be honest, day three took me a lot because on day three, I literally, literally wanted to just throw myself through a wall. And everybody that talked to me was like annoying me from my mom, my dad, you know, it, it, like 
that was something that it hit me in such a freaking tough way. And my dad was trying to be nice. He's like, Hey, I got you something. And he did, he got me some food that he knew I'd like. And I'm like, Oh, thanks. And he goes, he starts asking me questions on things for technology. And that always is a long thing. Cause I don't know why my parents can't remember passwords, but they don't. So I literally started to go and I'm like, he's calling and he's telling me these things. And I'm like, dad, I'm not being mean. I love that you're trying to help. And I love that you need, you need something and you're asking very nicely, but I have to create a boundary where I'm not comfortable in my own skin right now because I'm trying to get myself out of a negative mindset. Can you do me a favor and talk to me after you figure out your password? Because I just can't do it. And he's like, but, 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 and I could not handle it. I was like, I love you. Here's the boundary. I will call you when I'm, when I feel like I can talk. And the funny thing is that usually is a piss him off kind of moment. And it didn't. So I really like the fact that I'm able to say what I'm doing and how I am working and people see that I'm trying a lot harder, even if it is grape and edible underwear, uh, edible onesies and cherry. Boom. I love it. I love it. But I just, he respected my boundaries and that was really nice to see that while I'm working on me, he was able to turn around and come back to me and say, okay, I respect you. I, I, I understand. And I'm six days in and he came to me this morning and just said, I want you to know how much you really did. You asked me in the nice way, even though it wasn't the best tone, you saw you weren't in a good headspace and you came back to me and made sure I wasn't breaking any barriers. Bob says, I had my first and only massage in my life a couple months ago. It was fabulous. It was the first time I was pain free in 35 years. I need another one. You know what? I 100% get that. Uh, Mama Gotti, I love how self-aware you are. Oh, I, I honestly, let me let me thank you for that. I want to accept the compliment because I, I am horrible at accepting compliments. But the thing is, it's self-aware to help see that I'm broken and everybody has a broken. And it's not in a bad way. It's the broken that's there is we can all be repaired. And I just want to be able to be out front showing my best and being able to show what I've learned. And if it doesn't fit you, that's fine. Keep coming. We're going to try other things. And we want to be able to spread that love and positivity to people. And that's what it is, is I don't want to leave my house and want to run people off the road. I could, I, I, I just don't want to be that type of anger. And I, I thank you, Jeannie. I am not broken. Uh, you have an area you can improve. Exactly. And that's where I'm going is I want to be able to, I have a massage table at my house, Bob. Uh-oh, Jeannie and Bob, you guys need to connect. Bob will got, Bob is, Bob is one of the most amazing people and you're going to want to just keep massaging him. I think that sounds really weird the way I said it, but I'm going to go with it. Kevin, I love you, bud. It's good to see you, my friend. How you doing, brother? It is so good to have you here. I love that you're here. Thank you. Uh, there is always a secondary emotion. Thank you. Anger is always sec a secondary emotion. Let's tap into that for a second. Um, there is an awesome song that says that. You made it odd for sure. <laughs> I try. That was the goal. Um, but let's go to this for a second. Anger is always a second emotion. <gasps> Guys, this is Nick. What is up, Nick? How is your baby girl, buddy? I love that you came by to say hi. Give it a like and make sure to keep joining us, bud. We're finding the best in each other and building out the best in our community. It's, we're here to change our effing worlds. And I say that like that because I'm saving my F word. Uh, even though I probably already said it. But like, let's talk about anger really quick. Let's just dive into that. If somebody is responding in anger, usually they're not coming from a healthy place. Usually they're not coming from a place of understanding. And uh, hi, Nick. I love Mama Gotti. You guys, you just make me smile. Uh, broken is final. Broken down can be built back up. 100. Kevin, you are awesome. Thank you, buddy. And then Bob, I've been praying for you daily and I feel like you are going to have a major breakthrough in a lot of areas. I think that doing Sober October is part of the process for your breakthrough. <sighs> Thank you, Bob. It really is. And my breakthrough is nothing without my community of people that want to break through in their own self. And I, I say that and everybody's like, why do you care so much about people? It's not that I care that others are there. It's I care that others want to care about themselves. It's that little thing. I remember growing up and doing things and hearing I was different. I always thought that was bad, but 
it's because I actually cared for people. I actually wanted to see everybody find the best in themselves. I actually wanted people to see like what I see in them. And the truth is, it's hard to do. And anger can be a righteous secondary emotion. It is. And I, I, how do you care? How do you not care about people? I do care about people. I said, I do care about people. I don't care that I care about them individually. I care about people like, like Nick, watch this. You ready? Nick says, I don't know if you know this buddy, but I also have a baby boy on the way. God, that's awesome, bro. I, I met Nick and he was not even dating a girl. And then he started dating this girl and he fell head over heels in love and he met her. They had a kid. They're having their second kid. Nick is a young man who is doing everything in his life to make his life better and change it for the better. That is what we're about. And I love that he stopped by today. I think Elsa might be back. We're going to try it again in a second. Uh, it's a heart. You have an amazing heart with a gold and a golden heart. Bob Seymour coming from Halifax. It's working! Guys, we have our South African Yay! Yay! <laughs> yes! Guys. My daughter uh, saved me. You want to see her pretty face? Stick in your face. She saved me quickly. Just stick your hand in. Just stick your hand in so that I don't think I'm hallucinating and I really have a daughter. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> Elsa's just throwing. There we go. That's my. Hey, uh, uh, you're my favorite of the stone daisies. Thank you for being here and helping your mom. Pleasure. You are a beautiful soul. Thank you, Nip Nick. You make humans amazing. Well done, and best wishes on your journey as a daddy. Things you don't say to your boyfriend. Uh oh. Uh oh, yeah. Just, wait it. <laughs> just stick a hand in. <laughs> <laughs> I had to catch myself. Uh, so Elsa, what you, you are missed, You are you're here, and I love it. Uh, she doesn't have friends. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love you. True. True. Uh, Mama Gotti, hi. I've never met her. She's no, new. But so no, many people. Was, she actually was with us when we had Gavin and she's back now and having a wonderful time jumping in with us. And like, she is, she always brings the laughter just like Jeannie and everybody, but you missed Mike Herzog was jumping in here. There's a new one too. Nick is talking about his kids. I right. know Nick and like <laughs> things you don't say on air, just stick a hand in it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But we've been talking about the benefits I've seen since I've stopped smoking cannabis this month. But then we also jumped into <laughs> Mike Herzog had a wonderful comment telling me how he had he's done giving me subtle flirts through through the messages here. He's going to make them very obvious. So we've discussed <laughs> what your favorite flavor edible underwear is. And that's what you've missed so far this morning. Yeah. I he don't said, have a favorite flavor. I've never had edible underwear. It's something that I really want to try someday, but I've never had. Hey, Kevin, I've never had edible underwear. You've never had edible underwear? Anger. No. Oh, yeah. We were talking about anger, too, and how anger is an emotion. Guys, that squirrel in me is always on the on the wheel, but it never comes back. Why did you say my name? Moving forward, Ilsa's the only one allowed to say my name. Okay, I'm just going to call you Zog, all right? So Zog came by and like said... You, like you. <laughs> don't worry mikey will eat it do you know that commercial <laughs> mikey will which mikey will eat what what oh. things you don't say on air things you don't say on air mikey will eat it because <laughs> I, I know him so well this is gonna go bad for me zog works i love it i love it i definitely need to stop at the closest store that sells them Laughing my ass off. Like, for real. <laughs> like, all right, edible underwear. So let's do this. My favorite edible underwear was cotton candy flavor because it was just sweet. It played away. But I don't know if I really, <laughs> Mikey likes it. Even Jeannie's laughing at that. Things you don't say on air. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Mikey will eat it. <laughs> <laughs> edible undies with fancy fruit roll-ups uh yeah oh so anger i'm gonna go back to anger just because otherwise i'm gonna get stuck on things i shouldn't be saying on <laughs> uh, and save money 
Can you imagine sending your kids to school? Nick's watching. He's a young father, and he turns around, and he's learning about these things. And he's sitting here going, oh, edible underwear. Oh, why don't we just turn them in why, to save money? I'll take mom's edible underwear and turn it into fruit roll-ups. Could you imagine your kid opening a box of edible underwear at school, being like, and eating the phone? No, no. That's a good secret Santa gift, though. That's a good Secret Santa gift. But I, all right, that's uh, that's a funny one. Reed. I don't know what Reed is. Reed. Edible underwear is just fancy fruit roll-ups. That's why you say Reed. Uh, uh, so they, we want to dive into anger because we have a few minutes before we got our guests coming on. And I've already tagged in on the guest a little bit because I wanted to make sure I made sure everybody knew who we were talking to today and how cool, this, how cool he is. So anger is not... <laughs> Anger is not a negative emotion. If you can harness and direct it into something positive, a men, a f and men, and I because I'm saving my my f word. Yay, anger! <laughs> like I uh, get excited to get pissed off with somebody. He's about to run out of fruit roll-ups. Oh my god, you guys are <laughs> snack packs. Oh my god, I'm dying. Oh, Grant. Well, welcome, Grant. We are glad you are here. I love it. So I want to dive into the, the, so funny, I like snack packs. Oh my God, that is so inappropriately funny. I can't help it. Like, that, 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 so, that's uh, not a first date gift, hey? That's about three dates in. A, <laughs> edible underwear is a third date gift? So, yeah, so wait. not first date, at least third date. So wait, 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 just so I'm on the right page. Edible underwear is a third date. Your first date uh, should be what? Flowers? Second date, candy? Third date, edible underwear? No, is that what I'm we're not, going with? I, 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 I'm not a big flower girl. Um, I believe people buy flowers. Well, the people that bought me flowers usually just did something wrong. That's the only reason they bought it. <laughs> so I've got this negative thing about flowers. You can buy me food. <laughs> you can buy me food. Oh, that's actually a fair question, Elsa. So what if what? somebody bought you dinner? Do they need to get you something else, like a flowers and all that too? No. No. She's like, that's no. Give me good conversation and food and I'm happy. I, honestly, yes. Now, Stuart hit a good point and we're going to tap back into the anger thing really quick, okay? So redirecting your anger. My redirecting of my anger, you know where it started? Uh, no, no, no. We go straight to the underwear. Yep. We skipped the goldfish, <laughs> went straight to the underwear. Uh, if you bring edible underwear on a third date, I would hope you bring flowers also. What if they're edible flowers? That can work. Yeah. You Anything know? that's edible, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> so redirecting our anger. Um, when I redirected my anger, the first thing I had to do that I learned was I actually had somebody buy a punching bag and they're like, Hey, do you want to come over and hit it? And I did. I went over and beat the crap out of this punching bag. My knuckles were bleeding, everything like my hands were bleeding, but it felt so good to be able to put that anger out. And I did what, like within 20 minutes, I wasn't angry at the situation I was at. But then later in the day, when it started to come back and re-trigger me, I went back out there and I beat the crap out of it again. And the thing is, it, <laughs> Bob, I can't get distracted on this. We're not going back to edible underwear. <laughs> I, mm, see, it made me want to hit people, but that's the thing. Have you ever noticed, and I, I, I'm tapping into myself on this one for a second. Have you ever noticed, because we're going to talk about James Bond and Terminator. Did you ever see James Bond have anger? Did you ever see the Terminator? No. He got angry, but he took care of it in a healthier way. He was like, I'll be back. And he came back and took care of it. <laughs> and I literally, I say that as a joke, but think about that for a second. Bob, Bob, you're distracting me, Bob. <laughs> but it's one of these things where that anger being replaced, Stuart made a comment about cleaning. And that is something my mom and dad, Sarah, anybody I've ever lived with, loves when I'm trying to replace my anger into cleaning because the OCD kicks in. And then all of a sudden the entire house is spotless and looks amazing. But I also say when I'm angry, sometimes you can't go hit something or you can't go get a workout in and you have to find a new way of doing it. Um, Nick is dealing with two kids. So let's use this as an example. When I'm angry, I draw, but I don't see, I don't get angry often. I usually know how to control it. If it find your inner peace, hundred percent. Okay, but I want to ask you a question. Why do yeah. you decide to get angry? 
Because who, it's me? a decision you make. Anybody. It's a decision you make. He who it, angers you controls you. So, 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 um, I, 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 I just get angry because I don't get angry that much. So, but I don't get ugly when I'm angry. I will just breathe and then stand my ground. So I'm not rude or anything, but you're allowed to get angry. Why don't you want to get angry? It's not the anger. It's so let's say I get angry and I apologize for what's about to happen. Okay, because I know I'm loud. All right. But if I all of a sudden come at you, I'm like, you son, you son of a and I'm yelling at you. How does that feel? It puts you on the defense. It puts you yes. with anger. But if I find my inner oh, anger is such a fight with guilt to me. I agree. 100 day. Mm-hmm. Like, like I, one of these things is when anger isn't usually a decision staying angry is and that's the thing that quick anger thing that thing that comes out that you're like Argh! like you just you need you, you're mad at somebody and you want to get that mm-hmm. out if you're able to catch your breath and recenter yourself 100 percent, that is awesome but that doesn't work for everybody and i know men especially when they get angry it's a quick response of like i'm gonna get me I gotta, I gotta get even i play pranks on people if they play prank on me back does that mean i get angry or do I get even? I stay calm even. and I think it out and I get even. Now, Elsa, <laughs> when you get angry, your kids act up. Nick's kids act up. Are you going to tell him spank them in anger? Or are you going to say, hey, no, reset your no. See, anger See, I, I, can I, I, trigger I, I, that. I, 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 I. I used to be one of those people that let other people's um, actions and stuff dictate how, dictate how my day goes. Because once I'm angry... In, in the past, I used to just overthink the whole day and be pissed off the whole day. Yes. Um, and, 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 and I have, especially working with the, the boss that I have worked with, there's a lot of things that, that, that I wanted to, like when they say something, act in anger. I'm what sorry. I'm know? laughing at people's comments that I don't know if I should bring in or not. Now my underwear just welted to my area. Now I have grape nuts. <laughs> I read it and couldn't help but laugh. And then this is my ex, and I, I know where she's going with this. Uh, it's a complicated question from him, Elsa. He will be angry at A and turns it into a domino effect. But you admit, Sarah, because you've said this to me too. I've done that so much, but I've been able to restructure that and find where I'm actually angry at. And when I'm angry, I have to find that other way. Um, you can and see what the trigger. The thing is, you have to see what about the action or the person's words. Bye, Jeannie. Um, or the person's words or, or the situation. What is it that make that triggers you to be angry? Is it the way they speak to you? Is it because you thought it was going to go a different way? Because once you get angry and you, you realize you get angry, you're allowed to get upset. So that's yes. just people walk, walk all over you. But but definitely see where, where what it triggers. What triggers yes. it? Because I, I also used to be very, very angry. I used to be an angry person. And that's the thing. We are allowed to change. But the way that our change happens is by starting A with ourselves and not letting others that know us in the past, like my sisters. My sisters have this, Sarah, I love you to death, Sarah. You know I say this. But like, I, they have this view of me from this anger point. And it's very hard of 38 years for my sisters. Well, not really. They're younger than me. And Sarah, having years of dating me, it's one of these Mm. things where they have this viewpoint. And I have to understand that that's what they've seen me as for years. And that anger that was deep inside me needs to be able to be brought out in different ways and broken. And that was where I, I knew I had the problem is my anger was being displaced in the wrong emotion and being placed ahead of actually being able to bring my best out. So that anger had to be restructured inside Brandon. It turned into fire spinning. It turned into journaling. It turned into, and, and that's the thing. It has to be a positive for yourself. If you all of a sudden are like, well, I'm going to smoke weed instead of getting angry. You know what? Hey, uh, Nick's got to get back to got to get got to get back to work. Tag me in the next one. I'm on every morning, buddy, ten to noon, and then tonight I'll be on at six p.m. I love you, brother. Thank you for being here. Uh, send me a Facebook message of where you're working now, because I know you're not at the usual place, and I want to come give you a big hug, brother. All right. Um, yes, it is a reflection, not a criticism. I didn't take it as that. That's why I made sure I emphasized it. And for the record, I appreciate the work you have put in in redirecting your energy. And Sarah is the one that not- saw this. Exactly. Like, exactly. She saw that anger. And I, 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 
I want to emphasize how many individuals, whether you're the one that gets mad or you're the one that accepts the anger, when you're in a relationship, there's usually a give and take. One person's calm, one person's angry. But the thing is, when you're fighting all the time, the calm person's the one that feels the beat down and they don't realize it. And the, the person that's angry doesn't even know they're triggering somebody. You're, you're putting boulders on a person's back that you, that you don't want to hurt. Like I put boulders on my, my fiance, ex fiance's back and made her feel like I made her feel like shit. And she turned around and instead of responding in anger, not always, cause you're going to defend yourself, but like she would turn to me and be like, Brandon, go to the gym, go to the gym, go get out of your head. What are you for you? And she was the first person to really push me in that. And that was something that it really got me going. Uh, anger triggers, anger triggers my anger. And that's right. If you yell in front of me, I will stay calm the first time you yell a second time. I will let you yell, but I'm not going to yell back. It's that third time you yell and you disrespect me. Watch out. I, I, I literally, everybody that's here knows the one person I used to do a show with. I never yelled at that person. And then the minute I yelled at them, I made a grown man cry because I literally, it, you don't want me to yell because that's anger. I'm the that same. I'm, I'm the same. That's why I try not to get angry because if someone pushes me to that point, hey, my Sherry, um, what's his name? Um, if you push me to that point, I, 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 I used to have a very toxic mouth. Because it takes a lot to get me angry. But once I get there, you know that you have stepped on my toes a couple of times. And I have mm -hmm. asked you a couple of times to back up now. Mm -hmm. um, because I know that sometimes things trigger me that might not trigger you and everything. And it, 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 once you realize that and you can work from there. But I'm not the same. I will shout at you if, 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 you, if I've warned you. Yes. I mean, just yes. I mean, just but that's angry. the thing. If I yell back, like I, I, like I said, we're going to be talking about James Bond and the Terminator today. And the thing is, when did you see any of you pick another superhero other than Deadpool? Like pick somebody that got mad. And like, I don't think you Hulk, can think of Hulk one. needs to get mad. Hulk needs Ooh. to get mad to get his superpowers. Let's go there. Bring it. Go, hit, hit it. Hulk needs to get mad. You know Throw what? It at you me. know what? I want I want to tell you a story. I had this friend. I told you about the friend whose whose finger I spoke off. That's why I am so careful with my words. So it, it was something that was bothering me so much. I mean, because if this guy lost a limb, uh, uh, it, it's going to affect him for the rest of his life. And it was my fault because I spoke it off. I literally said, don't go and lose your your your, your finger. And then he lost his finger the next day. And, it, and I felt bad. And I was sitting in a conversation and this one... Um, friend of mine said to me you know what sometimes you have to be the person to bring that message across to bring that message across and sometimes you need to be hard and 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 you need to do it from a place of this is where the shit stops so you can't do it you, mm -hmm. sometimes the anger is necessary and that is why you get angry you shouldn't be upset when you get angry you should just say okay listen you know, how are we gonna move past this because you don't get angry just for nothing no there's always something that makes or, or, or something i decide I, I i i decided to change my words as well nothing makes me angry i decide i am so passionate about whatever is happening that i decide to be angry about it and stand my mm. ground and, and say mm. my say I, honestly that's I, I i like what stewart said here he says as anger increases, I got quieter. If I go silent, you don't want me to speak. And I think that that is actually profound in so many ways because I've seen that in my in my life too, Stuart. So I, I'm so glad you said that because I'm the guy that's known for talking. I talk so much. Just ask my ex-fiance, ask anybody that's in the comments, ask Ilsa. She barely gets a word in unless she hits mute on me. <laughs> but Thanks, if I'm... When I'm in a room, if I'm silent, people think there's something wrong. And if people are fighting and dis disrespecting one another, I just sit there in silence. And the minute they say something to me where they're like, well, what are your thoughts? Or why are you up? Why are you angry? That's when they don't want me to talk. And I've done that many, 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 many times. And I mean that in, in the fact that like I've been at bachelor parties that went apeshit bad. 
And then I had to turn around and these two guys are fist fighting and I'm sitting there in a chair reading a book. And they're like, how can you be so calm? I'm like, cause you're all idiots right now. You're literally fighting over stupid stuff. Cause you're drunk. Like, like this is dumb. And it's, we're supposed to be here we're having a party and we're instead looking at each other, judging each other for stupid things. And we let anger of past transgressions be what led it to that. And people, if, when I sat there in silence, everybody thought I was like about to like go crazy. But the truth is, it, it, when I go silent, be scared because that means I'm about to drop knowledge on people and everybody's going to feel like shit because the hardest person in the world on their self is usually you. You are usually your own worst critic. Mm. So if you're listening to everybody else and analyzing it without letting the anger get to you, guess what? You're taking that deep down thing. Oh, but Mandy, I'm a Taurus girl. I am a Taurus as well. I'm curious, Stuart, are you a Taurus? And then that Bob made a really... Say. Oh, no, you'd be at Sarah's a Taurus. That's why her and I butt heads. As well. Like, you, you all dated people. Can I read Uncle Bob's? Yeah, yeah. Holding on to ang holding on to anger is like drinking poison while hoping the person you are angry at dies. It eats you up and they are very often they very often don't even know that you are pissed. It's an exercise of self destruction. That is so true. It is. He's one hundred percent there. Bob, that is profound, my friend. Now I have to read one thing that I saw that I didn't bring in earlier. Give me one second. Here it is. I anger myself sometimes having conversations with myself, holding on to anger, anger benefits no one. So in my head, when I read that the ADD and Brandon literally like pictured like, so why are you wearing that? I don't know. Why are you wearing that? I don't know. Like I thought it looked good. Why you gotta be so hard on me? Why you gotta be so hard on me? Like I pictured me having that conversation with myself and it did not go well. Needless to say, I'm very glad that I, I took a shower. And I put a black shirt on to feel thin. Look, I'm thinning. I've also got, we, we, we twinsies today. We match, actually. We do. So we can walk down the streets and we look so pretty. We do. We walk right next to each other. Ready? Also, let's do our, our cat walk. Ready? Okay. Okay. Let me just make sure. I just want to move my transport. <laughs> oh, my God. That was funny. Ready? Yeah, do, you, do your model walk. Just do like how you teach the sharks how to swim. Well, that's different from walking. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Gotti says she's a Scorpio, loyal to a fault, but then my daughter's a Scorpio. Scorpio. She's now on the eighth of November. Oh, I see it. And then Stuart says, for me, perfection is not <laughs> high enough standard. I also I am a Virgo. Wow. I, I would have thought Taurus as well. I that's interesting. Uh <laughs> I'm not putting that comment up there, Bob. Uncle Bob, thank you. That was funny. I read it and I'm like, I'm nope, a almost go. I'm a Sagittarius. No. So we just love, love, and love people. Are you also the November of the eighth? Oh my word. Yes, my daughter will be turning 20 on the 8th of November. Good people. I love you, Mama Gotti. <laughs> you guys are now best friends. Like, you just I became know, right? it. By the way, Mama Gotti's my favorite too. Want to know why? Brandon? Oh, she's a Taurus. She says, you're looking That's, amazing, by the way. Yeah. Oh, you have amazing. you been uh, working out more or something? Ooh. I lost my beach ball. It went over there. <laughs> or over there. I don't know. <laughs> uh yes i've actually mama Gotti, it's been sober october uh i work out and i journal a lot more so it's taking my mental health my dietary health and my alignment of myself and being able to step up show you sh show up every day daily and be able oh thanks mama Gotti. brandon you are a doll i thank you uh but like i am someone that i wanted to show up for myself and I, I that sounds arrogant but the truth is if i could show up every day here and be able to bring my best foot forwards i know that just being me i will connect with so many people that want to find their best self and change their world and that's all i want in this world that's all i want is i want people to love themselves in such a way that the example i bring into myself will be something people can do for them and that's it that anger to the if you are a sagittarius to a taurus to a capricorn it doesn't matter it's being able to know that you have a community of people that see the best in you and want to change the effing world 
Thank you, Mama Gotti. Uh, you are really inspiring to me as well. And it, it, you can take notes or jump into the community more. <laughs> I read, I'm taking notes, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Fine, I'll start this part of the show. I didn't know. I thought this usually turned the camera off. Dude, like, oh, welcome to the show in the background. I know you're getting worried now watching me undress. It's just part of the show. <laughs> and this is my next leg, this Lexi. Uh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. you, CK. I love it. That's my dyslexia. Uh, <laughs> like I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking nudes. Dave says, "Oh man, I'm completely. Oh man, I'm completely grateful." <laughs> I love it. Mama got in them. I love it. Ah, oh, got it. I love it, guys. So, Elsa, will you do me a favor? Read the bio for Dave because he'll be coming on in a few minutes. And before anybody leaves. Do not worry. We are not going to talk sports. I know I'm a sports nut. I know he writes for Sports Illustrated. I will not talk sports with him. Maybe one question on sports. But I want to talk about James Bond and his books that are coming out because <laughs> the Terminator and James Bond. So, Elsa, help me out, girl. I got it. We are interviewing our special guest, David Hol Holcomb. Holcomb? Yep. Sorry, the pronunciation might be a little bit off there. I apologize in advance. <laughs> David is a writer for Sports Illustrated during the day and by night he writes best-selling books. He's like a superhero. Mm -hmm. As a self-published author, he's published two books analyzing this James Bond and Terminator film series. Will it be Buck? And his world never <laughs> dies. Both can be found. I just have to read it like that. I don't know why. I, you're Both you're can good. Be found. <laughs> but both can be found on Amazon and he's working on a third book. His third book will be his first novel. Mm. He began his journey as an author late in 2018. He published his world. He's, he published his World Never Dies, The Evolution of James Bond in June 2019, and then released It Will Be Buck, in, uh, The Rise and Fall of the Terminator in April 2020. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back after a word we'll from our sponsors. Back. We'll be back. Hi, my name is Brandon, and over the past year, the Delay Cafe team and I have traveled across the U.S., Researching this rapidly growing industry, CBD products. What we have found what we have throughout the industry were products that were inconsistent in dosage and used ingredients that weren't even lab tested. Products with chalky textures, bitter aftertaste, and worst of all, confusion among the CBD consumers. That's why we created Delight Cafe. A 15 milligram lab tested, all natural, water soluble hemp CBD powder pack. It's odorless, colorless, and tasteless. Add it to your favorite drink of choice wherever, whenever, on the go. Quickly find your calm, your balance, and your delight when you need it most. And we are back with the one, the only, hold on, Dave, give you the big screen. Boom. The one, the only, Dave Holcomb. He's here to teach us all about what it is like to be a Terminator. So I know you've been tuning in. Thank you for joining the comments and everything. We were having the discussion about superheroes and how, have you ever seen, like, I could go towards Die Hard, Bruce Willis. He didn't get mad. He got even. Uh, James Bond. Jason Bourne, all these different ones, they never got mad and let the anger be the thing that led them. Like, don't get me wrong, the anger was under there to get even, but they stayed calm and kept moving forwards. How do you displace your anger in a, be a better way, Dave? Because that's been our topic so far today. So since we're going to be diving into the, your heroes, let's dive into that too. Um, I have a treadmill downstairs that gets a lot of my anger. So um, when I'm upset, I run as fast as I can for as long as I can. And that's that's how I get it out. I love Running it. to know it. Yeah, that's the best way. So now you're a writer for Sports Illustrated. Yep. Everybody, say, they know I'm a sports nut. With that being there, Dave, if you're out there and you're uh, – you're writing and all this. What do you write about sports and how do you feel about them removing the name Indians from Cleveland Indians? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a sensitive about. subject for me. So know that I might have some passion behind it, but don't worry. It's not anger. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I, my, I mostly write about the NFL. Um, I, I love football. Um, I, I write some college football as well for another website, Southern Pigskins. I've been there for a few years uh, covering ACC and SEC a couple times a week. Um, and uh, but but I, almost all my writing is either NFL or, or college football. Uh, huge baseball fan, though. Don't write about it a lot, but I just have loved baseball since I was really little. And I think it was kind of time to make the the name change for the Indians. I'm glad they got rid of the logo a few years ago. That was really what the big issue was. But yes, I, I'm I'm I don't want to give anybody a history lesson today. But it is factually inaccurate to call them Indians. They the, Christopher Columbus arrived, called them Indians because he thought he was in India, and he was wrong. He wasn't in India. So um, I think the name change was warranted too. I like the new name. It wasn't anything too different. It was something where Guardians can be totally different. I just, it was so fast. And then to open, you ready? Now, I'm a Browns fan. I bet you never would have guessed being an Indians fan. And (laughs) we opened the game in Kansas City. And the articles that were written and written were all about how, how can you be starting a season at a team that's called the Chiefs in a place called Arrowhead that does Indian chants? And I sat there and I was like, that's a good point. And I'm like, I, I, cause like I, it's, it's one over another, but I'm going to digress from sports. Cause I promised only one sports question. I do have one more <laughs> and it's only because of the fact I have to ask, what is your sports team that you do? That, what is your NFL teams that you enjoy watching? I'm not saying your favorites. You just enjoy watching. Enjoy watching. Okay. Well, um, I do have to full, full disclosure. I'm from Pittsburgh. So I, I, <laughs> Big Steelers fan. Hopefully that, you know, Brandon and I can still be friends after I tell him that. (laughs) Okay. uh, okay. I'm taking over the show, Brandon. He doesn't want to get angry, Um, so he left. (laughs) I I cover the Falcons, so I watch every Falcons game. Um, In terms of teams I like to watch, I like the Chargers. I like Justin Herbert and and watching him. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes. Enjoy watching uh, watching him. And Despite being a Steelers fan, I love Nick Chubb. I, uh, Nick Chubb is a great running back that I enjoy watching a lot. So, and um, he actually has a—he gives so much back. His heart is in the right place as a leader, and that's why I like Nick Chubb. Uh, yeah. Pittsburgh is a very strong team, and even though you're starting out a little slow this year, it makes yeah. up for last year starting out eleven and zero. <laughs> and like, <laughs> honestly, you have Ben Roethlisberger. You have too good a team. You guys will be back in this. Like, I, I, I fear the Pittsburgh Steelers figuring it out because then they'll figure it out at the end of the season, come in, win the division somehow, just like Pittsburgh does. <laughs> and then I'm going to be at the Browns fan sitting on the side. And then doesn't it figure? I sent my sports friends all messages that you're going to be on. Like I have a sports writer coming on. I knew I didn't tell them we weren't talking sports though, and they were like, they, it, "I get the first Steelers fan to come up." But I have Dave getting my back here. He's like, "Hang up the phone." <laughs> so, what sport? Oh wow, Mama Gotti has a fun question for you. What sports character is most like the Terminator? Oh, that is a good. That's question. an interesting question. I didn't think um, of that one. It'd have to be a player. I mean, it might be just Tom Brady. It has to be a player that I think is defying the odds in terms of um, you think he's should be injured or should be retired. Tom Brady's 44 years old and still playing. I don't know how that's possible. I know he's not the most athletic person, um, but he the fact that he's 44 and doing what he's doing is Terminator-like. Yeah. Uh, um, there used to be a play a running back named John Connor. So he was, you know, terminated. That's, life, right? it just, you know what? <laughs> he was yeah, like, that's, 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 <laughs> the TB12 diet is ridiculous. He's a robot, Brady. Yeah. Uh, Brady and LeBron share the same dietitian and, and stuff. And what's interesting is they spend a million dollars a year on their body alone. That just flabbergasts me because I'm lucky if I spend $15 on my lunch. Like, I, I like it's <laughs> totally different. All right. Yeah. Back, who who came back? LOL, awesome, great answer. Uh, and now Mama Gotti's loving that it was John Connor. Now, I want to tap into your books. You might be a sports writer, and you might be in Pittsburgh. But in all seriousness, how, how did you come up with these books, and why did you decide to write books about, like, about these superheroes? And I say superheroes like that. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um... I, when my uh, my then fiance, we're, we're now married, uh, my wife and I, a few years ago, when, when she first, 
Thank you. Uh, when she, <laughs> we first started living together, um, I'm a bit, in addition to being a big sports fan, I'm a big movies fan. Um, I have lots of DVDs. So we're going through my DVD collection and um, she really had never seen James Bond before. I think her James Bond experience was playing GoldenEye with her brother on like Nintendo 64. So she had never really seen the series. So I was showing her some movies, teaching her about it, kind of realized that, that I really know a lot about it. I've watched the movies over and over again um, and thought, I have a lot of this knowledge that maybe somehow I can pass this along or reach out to other Bond fans by doing something for the Bond community. And I thought, oh, I'll write a book, but I thought it would happen, you know, 10, 15 years down the road. And then I kind of did some researching into self-publishing and thought that it was a realistic goal to do it right away. And that put me on the path to publishing the first book. And then I came up with the idea of doing a similar type book for Terminator, but kind of the opposite. The James Bond book was why it's remained popular after 60 years of the first, the first movie. Terminator, the new one came out in 2019 and really didn't do well, despite being, I thought, a pretty good movie. So it was kind of the opposite in that why is Terminator not still popular and, and relevant in, in, uh, in, in modern times? I, uh, I have also not watched all the James Bond movies, all the Terminator movies. I am guilty of that. I think I watched the, the, newest, <laughs> the newest one. Um, but there's one question. I don't know if this is a stupid question. And I am from South Africa, so I'm using my, 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 that English is my second language as an excuse if this is a stupid question. On your, on your, 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 your bio, you say that you've written two books and the third book is going to be a novel. Is there a difference between novels and books? Uh, a novel is a type of book. Is it a type uh, of book? What I think if you have to explain to me, because I have no idea, because when you said that I was, wasn't was sure what the she, difference is. She yeah. asked me, and I didn't want, I told her this is a great question for Dave, because there's going to be a difference in why his books are written. And I didn't want, I, I thought that would be something our audience would also identify with is like, well, wait, what is the difference between your books and why would you switch? So I'm sorry I interrupted, but I wanted to know. No, no wanted problem. To know. Um, the first two books were nonfiction. And then all novels are fiction. The, okay. They follow a you know, made-up character, made-up story. Uh, and I think for it to be considered a novel, it has to be a certain number of words. I'm not sure oh. what that threshold is. I think it probably depends on who you ask. Some people would probably say 50,000 words. Uh, I think some people I've talked to have said it has to be 100,000. But that's... I would argue that's not right because like that would eliminate of mice and men, uh, the great Gatsby, lots of great novel, classic novels are not a hundred thousand words. And you would be criticized in the writing community. If you say the great Gatsby isn't a novel. So, um, I don't think it's that high of a threshold, but it has, if it's, if it's below whatever the threshold is, then it's called a novelette, which is, also a fiction story following something that's made up, but it's just a little shorter than a novel. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for that explanation. I understand better now. What life lessons have you heard? Have you learned from the characters that you wrote the book about? About from Terminator and from um, um, James Bond. What life lessons that you that you use in your own life have you learned from them watching the movies? Um, I think from James Bond even though I think a lot of people criticize him for being a womanizer, but he is a, I think he, he is a straightforward person. Uh, he does what he says he's going to do. And I think there is something it's old fashioned, but the fact that he puts, you know, queen and country ahead of really everything else in his life um, is honorable. He's an honorable person. And I think, think I try to to do that, you know, on a on a day to day day to day basis too. be honorable, um, show up on time, do what you say you're going to do and, um, you know, be accountable for at all the places that you work or people that you interact with. It, it, he's an honest womanizer, LOL. Thank you, Mama Gotti. <laughs> yeah. So my yeah. question, my sure. question kind of went along with that is, how did you connect with these two characters? And I mean, like, 
Bond is so different than Terminator. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the way they handle themselves, the way they protect people, the reason they're protecting things. How did you connect with each one of them that you felt you could write such a good book, such different books? Yeah, um, I, I guess I, I connected with Bond starting when I was like 12, 13, and he was just he was just so cool. He was just the way that I love the the tuxedo. Um, you could, uh, we haven't we don't have our wedding photos yet, but I I had exactly the same tuxedo that um, James Bond wears, the bow tie, the black and white. It just he his demeanor, uh, the way he dresses, it, he's just he's so stylish. He's so cool. Um, he's so debonair and it's, I, I'm not particularly like that, but it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy of, I wish I was more like him. Terminator is a little different. I think what I, um, and what attracts me to it. Um, I love the time travel. I love the, um, especially in the first movie where they talk about, they, the Terminator is the robot, is the, you know, the not human character that's isn't, doesn't act like a human. He's trying to, to murder and kill. And um, that is so bad. But the movie explores ways in which humans are not human as well, where they're closer to they're distracted by technology or they're also murderous and, and not always uh, the most human um, of, of people, characters. So I, I, it's, it's, yeah, you're right. It is very different. I, I think Bond, the character is what gets me into that series and Terminator. I'm attracted to the, the time travel, the sci-fi, the, the action, great action in Bond too. But, um, I guess those are the, the two differences. Uh, your favorite Bond actor, which one do you prefer? Daniel I was thinking Gray. about this last night because, um, <laughs> I still love Sean Connery the most. Oh, um, me too. I love him. I love him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm old school. I, I love the, the old movies, but the new ones are great as well. I think Daniel Craig and Pierce Brosnan are, are pretty much tied for a second for me right now. And that's, that's a big deal because I did not like Daniel Craig at first. Like I did not like them bringing in him. I didn't like that he was blonde. Uh, there was lots of stupid reasons why I didn't like him at first. And he's really grown on me to the point where he's he's up there with my, my you know, in my top three. And, and, and I heard a rumor here in South Africa, I don't know how true it is, that um, they are looking at casting Idris Elba as the next James Bond. That's a rumor. I, I don't think they really, uh, there's nothing concrete who, who would be next. They typically don't like to, fill the role until the person that's currently bond has officially left. And that'll happen, you know, when this movie comes out and is out for a month or two, then there'll probably be a lot okay. more concrete rumors to uh, who will be next, but that he's been a popular name among, you know, the rumor circles of who could be the next bond for sure. And I think he'd be good. Uh, yeah. I actually was going to say, I think so too. Uh, what bond <laughs> Do you think James Bond would notice if Is Martini was stirred? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I act, yeah. he's like right? that um he's that high class, I guess, that he uh I think he notices the fine differences, the details. And he's a spy, so he's all into the details. But why do you think they say he's a womanizer? Because the the the, the ones I've watched, he's you not he, 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 you he get her, Dave. Him as, as, <laughs> he has them as partners. He, 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 I don't think he's a womanizer, so maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, so I would like to know why do you think people say that? He sleeps with, on average, two to four w different women in every movie. Um, so Sounds like an average man to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets paid for it, so he's lucky, and so it must be jealous. <laughs> I watched an entire movie two days ago. I didn't get laid four times. I don't know what you're talking about, Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I like how you, are you excited for the movie, the new Bond movie to come out this week? Absolutely. Yeah. I was um, lucky enough. I got to see it early. Part of um, the, the media release, the, the premiere. La that was last week. Yeah. Seems like a long time ago, but it was last week. <laughs> so I've already seen it, but I'm, I'm going again tomorrow on opening night. So I, I thought yeah. it was great. 
don't ask me too many questions. I don't want to give anything away about the movie. No, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to let you give that away. I'm going to see it. I'm seeing it Friday night. I'm actually going to a drive-in movie theater. Oh, cool. It's that and Venom playing at the drive-in. And I'm like, I'm not getting home till 3 a.m. <laughs> so it's a double feature? It is. And the drive-in cool. has always been a staple for, for me. It's just, you could sit outside, it's relaxing. I, I, I like the theater, but the drive-in's just different. You get to enjoy it in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, you still have, is it like a special drive-in? Is it like a special place or do you have drive-ins all over? Because we have none left in South Africa. They built casinos where ours was. <laughs> Didn't expect it that is. answer. I'm not even lying. Uh, I watched I, I watched Aladdin there when I was in school, and now there's a, a casino. I honestly, so in Cleveland we have a few different ones. Uh, it's it, they popped up during COVID because you can sit in your car and watch the movie again, and a lot of places reopened. Uh, how did Pittsburgh? Did you guys have drive-ins oh, still, or you know, I've never been to a drive-in. Dave. Yeah. The Browns yeah. play the Steelers this year. I don't know if you know. We play you twice. <laughs> if you decide to come to Cleveland for anything, I would be happy to take you to a drive-in. Bring your wife. I'll, I could get a crew of people if you want, and we will have a great time. And just you, you can bring your own food in and everything. But a drive-in is an experience you have to try. It's just so different and so much fun. Now, I have yeah. to go back because I did have a different question. I, I, the drive-in was just a side comment. Sure, sure. <laughs> How close do you think we are to time travel? <laughs> um, I, uh, I have no idea. Probably not very close. <laughs> I would I say not very close. You think? I don't know. I would, so if you could time travel, would you and where would you go? Oh, that is a great question. Um Probably back to 1979 to see the Pirates win the World Series because it's never going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got nothing. I, I understand. I, mean, you know, I, was like, okay, I don't even know. Is it football? Baseball. Baseball. Okay. Yeah, I don't know football or baseball. I know rugby, um, but I know a lot of in South Africa yeah. with the, 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 the rugby teams as well. They're exactly the same as the football fans. Nobody likes anybody. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the sarcasm and the, the, the fighting and, and all that. It's the same. The politics, exactly the same. I have a good, this is now also with the James Bond um, and your favorite, because there's quite a bit of James Bond movies. If you have to yeah. rate your top five James Bond movies that you will watch over and over, which ones will that be? Because I Ooh. haven't watched a lot. So maybe you can send me in the right direction to start yeah. watching the ones that's good. Sure. Sure. Um, I, again, I was working on this last night. I guess I just knew what you guys were going to ask. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pull up my list here. Uh, again, I, I love the earlier ones, the Sean Connery. Um, mm. So my favorite is still Goldfinger. Uh, I think GoldenEye is a great, I guess it's not too modern because it's 25 years old now, but it's a it's a classic uh, newer Bond movie that I would highly recommend to anyone trying to get into the series. And I got The Spy Who Loved Me is my favorite Roger Moore Bond film. I think that one is really great. And um, my other two I ranked in the top five were Daniel Craig, the Casino Royale and Skyfall. And they're like 4A, 4B for me. Like they're, 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 I love, I love them both. They're, they're really great. I want to switch to Terminator for a second. Sure. You mentioned how the movie Terminator, the newer one, didn't do as well. Do you have any, <laughs> I, I, what's your, I, I want to say idea, but what is your thoughts on why that didn't do as well as the older Terminators? I share about a lot of this in the book. Um, I think they, the, even the third Terminator movie, but definitely the fourth and the fifth weren't that good. Um, so there were really low expectations for the, uh, the, the fifth Terminator, or I guess sixth Terminator, sixth Terminator, Dark Fate. Um, and uh, I think people, they kind of made an enemy on both sides of the uh, political divide, unfortunately, because I think they made it a little bit more, um, you know, liberal in the minds of conservatives by having the lead be a female. Um, a lot of the terminate the the character that comes the Kyle Reese character is also female. Um, so I think people were turned off by that. Um, but yet, like liberals aren't 
weren't screaming to go see Terminator either. I think that's why uh, that, you know, it, it didn't do well on either side. Um, it had some political implications as well about, you know, the border and that didn't go over well with conservatives. So the combination of, of a bad uh, f- previous few movies and uh, maybe angering the more conservative Terminator fan base, uh, probably those are the two main reasons. It also, I think the originals are still relevant, but I think part of what made Terminator in the 80s so um, unique or, or relatable um, was the nuclear war aspect. And that's been done a lot by other places and it's not fresh. It's not new. Um, and we're also not on the verge of nuclear war anymore. Hopefully gladly. Um, like we were in, you know, probably I wasn't around, but like I've heard we, we were on the verge of in the cold war. Are you familiar with Elon Musk? Obviously you are. And, 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 (laughs) And and, and 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 what he says about AI, do you think that 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 what he says um, holds water? Uh, that AI will overtake us, like in Terminator, or do you think it's all just fiction and nothing's gonna gonna happen? I think it's all just fiction. Um, I guess anything can happen. I never like to say never, <laughs> but uh, you know the Browns won in Pittsburgh last year. Never say never. So. <laughs> oh, you want to go that way? Oh, that was right. <laughs> that, now we're gonna go. So I have a question here. I've been holding back on. So Mr. Rogers is from Pittsburgh. Why not write a book about the superhero of Mr. Rogers? Oh, that's a good idea. Um, I, and that's not a dig. I'm asking because yeah. I actually am a big Mr. Rogers fan because. And it's not like I'm like wearing a sweater. I do have a Mr. Rogers sweater, but <laughs> it's one of those where it's like Mr. Rogers brought a totally different energy to modern TV and he fought for things for public broadcasting and mm-hmm. being from Pittsburgh. I, 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 I just have to ask, is that someone that you could look at as a superhero to write a book about because of what he did and the fights he fought for the people, not just of Pittsburgh, but for the nation? Sure. Yeah. I think that would be, you know, an excellent book. I, I would have to look to see, there's probably been books written about him by someone else I would imagine. Um, but yeah, that would be a, a great topic. I loved the movie a couple years ago. Um, yes. I forget what it was called with Tom Hanks. Um, yeah, was, so do I. And I saw um, it before it hit theaters and I actually got to meet Mr. Rogers, uh, wife, Mrs. Rogers yeah. at the theater because cool. it was a pre-screening and yeah, a friend yeah. of mine got tickets last minute. Let's go deal. And uh, welcome to the neighborhood or it's all in yeah, the neighborhood. Check the neighborhood. <laughs> <Something> <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> right. Um, and I, I think what struck me about that, uh, that, that story, that movie was the kindness that he had. I mean, yes. Just, he was absolutely the most um, kind, nice, good-hearted person that if we all tried to be more like that, then we would just have a much better world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Now, I, I, I was nice. I went with Mr. Rogers. I give you one. I let you do two. I'm going to mm, – don't make me come to South I Africa know, and train your – I just want to ask before you guys get to another question and then I come back – Who's Mr. Rogers? Because I don't know who that is. And you know what? That is my fault. I should have told her about that before the show. Go ahead, Dave. Tell her about the awesome man that Mr. Rogers is. He was, um, he he had a a kids TV show on PBS that um, he he took the, uh, it it was him in Pittsburgh in his neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, that's it. Um, and he would take them around to different places around where he lived and and he lived in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. And then he would also take the show to, um, the, what was it? Make believe that it, he, and it was like a fantasy world for little kids. He had puppets with animals and it was taught, taught young children, you know, life lessons. Um, this was for, you know four or five-year-olds. I think he had an episode about what to do when another kid hits you um, or, you know, tries to bully you. And he always, you know, he was very peaceful, very um, kind-hearted, nice, uh, very nice person. And his show was on public broadcasting in, in the United States. 
he he was just he broke barriers in the way that one of his big things that made him very popular was he uh he had an African American mailman and he invited him to come and sit in the pool with him and it was the first time that you saw P interracial on television let alone public broadcasting and Mr. Rogers was the one that wanted to break those barriers and he did it because he looked at everyone equally and that's why I, I I'm a big Mr. Rogers fan I'm also uh, he, a big Mr. Rogers fan now he you are. That, then, uh, yes, if he does that, then I'm also a fan, definitely, because that's how it's life supposed to work. Okay, I'll leave you. <laughs> She's like, all right, I'll let you ask your question now, Brandon. <laughs> Dave, I noticed on your website, I want to pull that up for everybody. I shared the link so everybody could click it. First sure, off, you're, you. awfully, you're, you're awfully young, buddy, to be doing such amazing things, writing for Sports Illustrated. You've already been published twice. And I, excuse me, as a hiccup, I also read on your bio here how you plan to self-publish a book one to two books a year over the next coming years. Like what is the, what, what is in you that like is making this come out? Cause I think that's a phenomenal thing. And why did you decide writing was going to be your outlet? I've always enjoyed writing back, you know, when I was in middle school um, and I really explored it a lot in high school. I had some great English teachers in high school that really um, pushed me to, find meaning in everything. And, and I just enjoyed, um, going back and watching, um, movies that I had watched so many times as a kid. And then it gave me a whole new perspective to try and find different meaning to it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so writing has always been something that I've enjoyed and has, uh, I just have tried my best to make a career of it. It's hard <laughs> to make a career of writing, but, uh, I've, I'm trying to do that. Did you always wanted to be a writer? Or what did you want to be when you grow up? Did, 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 did uh, you want to be James <laughs> Bond or, or, or Terminator <laughs> first and then decided to start writing about them? I wanted to play baseball first. Um, and then when I realized that wasn't going to work out, um, I wanted to be a sports something. I think originally I wanted to be an announcer, a sports broadcaster. Uh, and I wanted to be the next Mike Tirico and be the Monday night football announcer. Um, and then I kind of realized that um, I liked more of the print media. Uh, I liked more writing. I thought that I don't want to diss visual media on a visual media, but um, there, I like the, um, I, I think you can connect and tell more stories when you're not caught up in, in trying to be so visual. And when you're doing that with writing or radio, um, you have that ability to tell, uh, uh, I think, a better story because I just felt like in all the TV classes I had at Syracuse, it was always, well, you know, this is a great story, but you don't have any, you don't have any visuals. You don't have, you don't have good shots. And it's like, but I want the story to be what's important. So I, I felt like that was, um, that led me to more let me down the writing path as opposed to sports broadcasting. You are writing books and you're doing all these things, but you, you have to have somebody that's your inspiration that you look to for writing and all that. What book do you recommend people read that inspired you? And I have to jump in here really quick. Sorry, I saw this right before right before I started asking my question. Uh, you would rock at announcing <laughs> good voice for it. So now you have fans coming to you wanting to hear you broadcast these games now. All right, just say it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, books I would recommend. Uh, you want fiction, nonfiction, either one? Something that inspires Dave, that, that got Dave to want to like either the book that got you into writing or a book that mm. you read recently that you're like, look, I just think this is something that helped me that I think people should read anything that's yours. That makes Dave, Dave. Um, I, I guess I'll go with three, three novels, three fiction books. Um, I really liked the hunt for Red October. Um, I've been trying to reread it. I started it in August and then football season started. So I'm probably gonna have to wait until February since Super Bowl is now on Valentine's day. Um, to uh it's the day before valentine's day this year i honestly my browns are going to be there i should have known that <laughs> you should <have. laughs> 
I have I, I I'm I'm manifesting that right now on air. We're gonna make it to the Super Bowl. It'll be the first time in Brown's history to be at a Super yeah. Bowl. Like uh, oh sorry, sports talk. I'm not supposed to do that today. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um so the hunt for October, I really liked the Jack Ryan series. Um I got into the Jack Ryan series because of the movies at first, but um then I started reading the books. Uh and I, I love Hunt for October. Um Ian Fleming, James Bond, of course. I love the first uh, Bond book, Casino Royale. I would recommend that to any Bond fan for sure. And um, I think more recently, uh, Jack Dawes was a book that I read. I knew that I wanted to write World War II fiction. That's what the, my next uh, book is is about. And uh, I tried to read other books in the genre. And my favorite one that I came across while reading some World War II fiction was was Jack Dawes by Ken Follett, I think is how you pronounce his name. It's I think it's a French name. I'm not great with French pronunciation, um, but uh, he's a great author. He's written a lot of books. I read a few of his and my favorite was by far Jack Dawes. And I think if you read Jack Dawes and then read my book, you'll see kind of where he influenced me. With that being said, do you have any of any other people you'd want to write a book about? Like any other superheroes? Because we had fun playing around with them today. Oh, the Hulk gets mad. Oh, this person, uh, Batman, I saw gets mad. And he does. I didn't yeah. even think of that until I, I read that comment. But like, what is another superhero that you would love to be able to actually like write about, see, or break down like you did these two? Um, Indiana Jones is one that I've thought about. Um if you're, if, I don't know if he's, he's not really a superhero, but uh, we're counting James Bond as a superhero. So I think Indiana Jones would count too. I agree. Uh, okay. Uh, and, and he has, the, the, they have the new movie in new Indiana Jones movie coming out. So I think that would, if, if I can come up with a good angle, that would be a book that I would like to do for sure. Um, Die Hard is another one, John McClane. Um, I've always loved Die Hard and, and the McClane character I, in terms of, like, I, I like exploring topics that I enjoy and that's first and foremost, but I do want to sell some copies of the books that I write. And the reason why I probably won't do a John McClane one is because it's been a few years since Die Hard came out and I just don't know what the audience is for that kind of book. But with Indiana Jones coming out again, I think maybe that'll get some you know, at least nostalgia going for some of the old fans. And that is a potential book, but I, I don't know what the angle is yet. Who, who has been, sorry, those are Hardy does and they wait until you unmute and then they just start <laughs> shouting at each other. <laughs> I apologize. Um, who has been your mentor in your life? My, my with, mentor? With regards to, 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 yes, with regards to getting into the sports writing and into to writing the books. Um, Like, what do you mean by mental? Sorry. No, mentor. Like mentor, Men someone that mentors. Mentor. Like mentor. 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 Yes, oh. yes. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bird. Um, she, and she's not a writer, but I would say my mom has always been uh, pushing me to to um, make goals for myself and and go after my dreams, I guess is what I was saying. And my, my dad as well. Um, but my, my mom in particular has been, um, especially with the James Bond book, I, I think she was the first person that I mentioned it to. And uh, she said to, to do it, go for it right away. And I was like, well, are you sure? I'm You don't normally write a book at 28. And I don't know what kind of audience that, I can get and I don't, I mean, don't I need a publishing house? And she just pushed me to say, well, just look into it. Just look into if it's possible. And that pushed me to the self-publishing realm. And and here I am, I guess. You shouldn't say that you're 28 and you, 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 you can't publish books. We have interviewed people that are way older and way younger that's also published books. You should never put it, put what did they say? Uh, limitations Grenade on yourself. On it? Is that... Yes, don't put limitations yeah. on yourself. We want to see some more books. You are, you have to do the the, the 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 Marvel series with Aquaman and all them in because I think there's lots of things that we can. And I'm a Marvel fan. I'm not a big Terminator and Bond fan. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's okay. We'll, we'll get you into them. I'm, I'm a John not, McClane I'm fan. The list that you gave me. <laughs> I'm a John McClane fan, but that's just Ooh. because Bruce Willis is my like superhero in my heart. Like that's who I want to be like. Maybe it's the bald. Maybe it's the buff. <laughs> I don't know. I just know it. So Dave. You are a Pittsburgh fan. You mm -hmm. write for the Atlanta Hawks or Atlanta Falcons. Sorry. Um, see, my sports knowledge kick, doesn't kick in. When Dave's alone and he's with his wife, congratulations on the marriage, by the oh, way. Thank I, you. I, by the way, when you get your wedding pictures, I need to see the picture of you you in this talks, just so we're clear. Like, I, I absolutely yep. am excited. That will make that the profile picture for this episode, just because it's that cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. So, so what does Dave do for Dave? I, 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 It's a very random question. I know that. But like, the thing is, to be able to write a book, a lot of people don't know that in themselves, that they have that capabilities. And it, your mom giving you that inspiration is amazing. I, I, I love how you phrase that and everything. But when you wake up in the morning and you kiss your wife and you James Bond her, then you turn around and go out and start your day. How do you, <laughs> the smile was worth it. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> but like, how does Dave know that Dave's reaching his goals daily and weekly and find the best in himself? Um, I, I guess I, I really, I'm a, very, a list person. I like making lists and goals for myself and, um, I love crossing, I love accomplishing things, I guess, cause I love crossing off, you know, even if it's like do the dishes and I cross it off, I mean, if I feel accomplished and I think that I try to set realistic goals, but, um, goals for the week goals for the day. Um, if it's like, you know, reach out to 50 people to see if they'll read my book or write 500 words or, I'm going to write two, two football stories today, whatever, whatever it is. And then, you know, year long goals. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to write a book this year. I'm going to um, watch this many NFL games to improve my knowledge or whatever. Um, is that, I, I, I'm sorry. No, no, no um, you're great. So I guess for, for myself. Yeah. That's, that's what I, I try to make goals, make lists, I guess, and then cross, cross them off as I go. I love it. I love it. We were talking about time traveling. If you can travel back in time and talk to your 16 year old self, what advice will you give? Oh, that is a good question. Um, not that I was like, not that I didn't know this at the time, but I, I, I guess I would say like, don't take life too seriously. Enjoy, enjoy, um, enjoy your high school and, and college years. And, and I did, but, um, just really, um, make the most of every day, make the most of, uh, of your time. I love it. I love it. John, uh, er, John, I almost said John Wick, uh, Stuart Lone Wolf. <laughs> yeah. John Connell. Uh, have you considered writing a book about the anti-heroes? And I, 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 I love that question. Well, that's an interesting question because a lot of people think James Bond is an anti-hero. Um, you know, I I wouldn't consider him a, a an anti-hero, but um, I talked about that in the book. Of it, you know, he does things that are not um, that a hero wouldn't do, um, using mostly using women. But um, he the I think that if you look at the definition of anti-hero, is he he doesn't always do everything that's morally correct but he has an end goal in mind that is for the greater good. And by that definition, Bond kind of is an anti-hero. And, and I, I think the later movies for sure, they portray him more like that in the earlier movies, for sure. You're supposed to consider him a hero. He's, he's the good guy. The, the other guy is definitely the bad guy. And he, and you're on his side all the time. Not that you're not on Daniel Craig's Bond's side. You are, but he's I think they make him more of a real person and they because he's more of a real person he isn't always um doing everything that's 100 percent right and I think in my new novel you'll see that there are anti-hero characteristics to the main character that he he 
kind of like James Bond. And, uh, he's like James Bond in that way, that you're definitely rooting for him. I, if you're not rooting for him, you're not going to enjoy the book. I mean, he's the main character. He's the hero. But there are things about his personality that maybe you wouldn't be, maybe you don't like, or if you met him in real life, you, I mean, you wouldn't be friends with him. Uh, she pointed at me. <laughs> I just want to make sure. She's like, <laughs> so if you could give someone this book to read and like both of them, one for each, so you get two people, who would be the person you'd love to be able to read your book? The James Bond and Terminator? Yeah. But one of, you could pick two different ones if they're different. Um, probably, you know, somebody in the series, um, either like, you know, Barbara Broccoli or, or Daniel Craig. Um, and I would love to, uh, I, I'm planning to republish the bomb book after kind of analyzing the new one, see it a couple more times. I want to put my thoughts from the new one into, to like a second edition or whatever and republish. And I would love to have a forward from somebody that was uh, involved in the series. So that would kind of be my goal of, Hey, would you read this book? And if you enjoy it, would you write a forward for it? Um, that that for so for bond that would be uh, it would be awesome to get somebody like daniel craig or barbara rockley to um write a forward so that that, that would be who i would want to read that book terminator i'd probably go along the same lines maybe uh maybe linda hamilton the the actress who plays um sarah connor or um or james cameron i'm a huge james cameron fan i um I mean, he can't maybe Arnie. Him. Sorry, maybe Arnold. Don't you want him to? to, to well, I mean, I mean Arnold... he's the original Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I think through writing the book, the Terminator book, I realized that yes, Arnold is what brought me to the series, and and is what he's the one that brought almost all of us to the series. I, I should say, but I think Linda Hamilton and her character is what makes it a classic. And it's her, it's her character and her, her transformation from waitress who can't get orders right to the mother of the mother of John Connor and raises him to be the leader of the human race against the big bad machines. That is what Terminator at its core is all about. And that's mm -hmm. why I think I would have Linda Hamilton read it or, or James Cameron who wrote that story. And I think James Cameron is just brilliant with mm -hmm. His work, mm -hmm. Terminator, uh, Titanic, and, and Avatar. The guy just, he knows how to tell a good story. He does. So, One of my favorite movies is Avatar. And oh, I know it was hard awesome. because yeah. it's the only movie that my son watched when he was a baby. That's the only thing that he watched on repeat was Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not a good mother because it's got violence in, but I don't care. He was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> And he's 13 now, the damage has been done. I'm sorry. <laughs> if, if, uh, I, I wrote a, I wrote a, a quick, those birds, sorry. Um, if your enemy must write a book about you, what do you think the title will be? If, if what, somebody wrote a book about me? <laughs> yes, your if enemy. Your enemy. Oh if my enemy. enemy, someone that didn't like you. If they so, you know, a Browns fan, right? <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, it would probably be something sports related. Um, I don't know. That is a great question. It's it's hard coming up with book titles. Uh, I can't come up with one and you know on the spot, even if it was for something good. And this is for something something bad. Yeah, well, and it's bad against you. Good. Yeah, bad against me. Yeah. I, I here. I'll um, work on it. I'm gonna come up with a title by the end of the show. I have 15 minutes to give you a title okay. for, for your enemy's <laughs> book. <laughs> That's so mean, That's... but I'm going to have fun with this. Um, <laughs> Dave, I'm Mandy Atterbury asked the question, can she nick your idea and do a book on her favorite superhero? I think she says it's John Wick, but Mandy, oh. I don't know who your question is. Is it for John Wick or someone else? I want to make sure because I don't want you to feel I didn't see your question either. Um, passed up a battle angle. I didn't know this. Uh, that's an interesting fact on, mm. uh, on Avatar. Uh, so... Yeah. Dave, uh, while Mandy tells us exactly what her favorite superhero is, and if you'd be even if you could write a book about that, um, sure. I we'll we'll see that in a second. But with being 
a sports guy and then the movie guy. Those are two mm -hmm. very different parallels. And yeah. it's it, they're entertainment, but at the same point, they're more than entertainment. They are uh, your your sports is the way people feel through life. The NFL, uh, right. the movies connected with people in a different way. Your books and your writing are building a, a future on things. How would you like to leave your influence of writing on people? Um, I think uh, I like. Uh, I, I hope that I, I like analyzing things. So I guess what I would like people that read my books to come away from is that either if they're nonfiction, they were good analysis, or if they are a novel fiction, then hopefully they're doing what I'd like to do. And they, they kind of dive in and, and analyze the, the hidden meaning or meaning that might be somewhere in the book that is not easy to see. And that's what I try to do with the, the novel, the road to reciprocity that's coming out. Um, it's entertaining. It's, I don't want to, I think fun is probably not the right word because it's a World War II story, but it is an entertaining action adventure. But when you dive into it and really like think about it, there is that hidden um, meaning that you can find. And I guess that's what I would like to leave behind with my books is the analysis of the nonfiction and then the, well, let's, wh where, what is he trying to say? What is, what is hidden beneath the surface? in the in the in the stories the life lessons out of the stories i don't know if we saw we didn't see this this question from stewart what's your favorite bond gadget apart from the db5 i have to say the exploding pen in golden eye is just so classic i love it that uh and and the the um boris you know how he goes like this with this with his pencil I guess I'm a little out of practice, but it took me a long time to, to, to learn how to do this, but I got it eventually. And uh, that's such a cool part of it. <laughs> it's such a cool part of the movie. Mandy asked if it would be Batman. Would you write a book about Batman? And I think that'd be interesting because you do have two sides of Batman. Like you yeah. have the philanthropist billionaire, and him being able to just create and pay for all his gadgets to be made and all that stuff. But then you have the guy that's out there actually, you know, protecting people. I, I, I picture like Spider-Man as well. Like he would be one that like keep, keeping up the hidden identity. Uh, Superman, that would be one. Mm -hmm. But uh, with those names, those are like classic superheroes. Don't do Green Lantern. Ryan Reynolds admits that was one of his worst. So, <laughs> <laughs> but with that... Batman would be an interesting book. Could you see yourself diving into like a Batman, Superman, Spider-Man kind of thing with the movies? I wasn't huge into the those those characters that you mentioned. I think Batman of those that you said though is my favorite, and I guess I wouldn't say never. Um, there there is a beginning of I think it's the second chapter in the Bond book where I I kind of compare. Batman to James Bond. And there's a lot of similarities. It's very interesting. I was thinking about it through writing the book and they're both orphans. Um, they're both um, trying to think of the other similarities. Um, but, but the, I think there's a lot of crossover and I guess the other big similarity with the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, he started Batman in 2005 and, and Daniel Craig's era started in 2006 so they really overlap and there was a lot more emphasis put on realism and portraying um, those superheroes as everyday people. And um, rather than them having a new woman in every movie, they, they have emotions, they fall in love. And um, there's a lot of, a lot of what is happening in the James Bond series is also going on in Batman. And yeah, that would be an interesting that would be interesting to explore. Can I, can I ask? Sorry, somebody's mowing their lawn. It's summer in South Africa. <laughs> We've got weird noises with Elsa today. <laughs> I do apologize. 
Um, I wanted to ask in during the COVID, um, being a sports writer and and and, and all the sports being cancelled and stuff, what yeah. did you do to keep yourself busy and 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 sane during those 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 locked up months that we had? I poured uh, as much energy as I could into the into the Terminator book that came out real early. I started writing that before COVID hit, but uh, I think it came out probably faster because um, sports got canceled in, in mid-March and it came out in April. And I wanted it to get out there because I thought maybe there's a need for, for book reading since there's not much else going on in the world. Um, I, I, read, I read books. Um, I watched a lot of movies on, you know, streaming devices and kept myself busy that way. Um, and watched a lot of movies that probably wouldn't have been able to get to or, or give a chance to because, uh, because sports weren't around. So Dave, we're all, we have a lot that we do here. And I love that you have this great energy about you and you're bringing superheroes into a fun conversation and all that. And you are, you have this smile and genuineness about you that just is natural. So I, I, I've really enjoyed getting to know you a little. Oh, dang it. Thank I meant you. to have that go on all of them, but I'll switch that. That way all the, all the sites have it. Um, with your new book coming out. Is this, would you, I, I want to know a little bit more about your new books. We talked about both your, uh, James Bond to Bat uh, Batman, <laughs> James Bond to Terminator. Sure. Tell us a little bit about your new book, and I, I'm sharing the link for everybody so that way they can go check out your first two books, and also know about your third book coming out and why that would be something that you, uh, why everybody should go purchase that. Yeah, it's called The Road of Reciprocity. Uh, it's about a U.S. dispatch rider that in World War II that finds out he, he has two brothers that are also serving and he finds out that they may be wounded behind enemy lines. And it's kind of the book is about how he deals with that information. Uh, what he does, he leave his post and um, his, his fellow army soldiers to go see if his brothers are okay, or does he leave his brothers behind to remain honorable and, and continue serving? Um, it's a kind of a, a, a moral question that I hope people, not that you can relate to it. We haven't been, we, we haven't been in that situation, but I hope people that read the book can kind of ask themselves, what would I do? And, and I think uh, we talked about like hidden meaning. Um, I think one of the things I want to um get people thinking about while they read it is we, I think most of us have siblings and all, we all have great friends as well. And not that I want, you know, people to pick between their friends and their, their siblings, but if you're in a situation where you have to pick, or, I mean, what, is, what is most important to you? How would you deal with that when both of them need you at the same time? I'm waiting to see if she's going to point at me. I know she has a delay. That's the only reason I'm pausing for a second. Uh, you ready, Elsa? I got. I can dive. I have questions galore. I you can you can no you can ask. Uh, I thought we would you you wanted me to read. That's why. Oh no no no! We'll do that in a second. Yes. We still have eight minutes. Uh, we'll do that. uh, <laughs> That's day, why I thought you were pointing to me because I wasn't sure if we're going now. Or what we're going? To do. <laughs> you are good, uh, Dave. Have you read any of the Sherlock Holmes books? And I thought that was a good question because of the fact. Sherlock Holmes is a very unique writing yeah. and then how they did the movies. I just loved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I read a couple of them. I think the first one, which I don't remember the title of off the top of my head, but uh, mm -hmm. it, it's been a while. I think I watched, uh, read them in, uh, in college and I, I would like to get back into them. They, they were, the one I read was good. I enjoyed love it. that. Yeah. So, Dave, the way we end every single show is with positive affirmations and information and teaching people things. It's Wednesday. Most people call it hump day. Uh, now that we know you uh, have a wife, we you can 
have your hump now. You know, you can get over the hump of the week. Uh, but we also call it hemp day because uh, I own a CBD company as well. And it's all about being different and exotic and making sure we connect with people because not everybody's going to smoke, do lotions and oils. And every Wednesday, we do an interesting fact to teach people something new about hemp. Today, Elsa's going to teach us something about hemp. Then she's going to give us her goodbye and a motivational speech just quick thing like guys today's the day that we change the world whatever uh but that's where after she goes i'll do a quick one so you see how it's done and okay. it's just me sharing a quick motivation and then you get to do the last one of the day before we say our goodbyes to everybody sound good okay yeah sounds good all right ilsa teach us girl i'm ready let me just unmute myself so excuse the noise and everything so we're going to for for hump day the the the, the, the lesson is for the letter q for cute okay i'm just lying i can spell <laughs> so quite the history archaeologists found a remnant of hemp cloth in ancient mesopotamia currently iran and iraq which dates back to 8000 before christ hemp is also believed to be the oldest example of, of, of human industry. In the Lushi, uh, the, a Chinese work of the Sing, Sung dynasty, we find a reference to Emperor Shen Nung, 28th century before Christ, uh, who taught these people to cultivate hemp for cloth. It is believed that hemp made it to Europe in approximately 1200 BC. From there, it spread throughout the ancient world. China appears to have the longest continuous history of hemp cultivation, over 6,000 years. And then France has cultivated hemp for at least 700 years to the present day. Spain and Chile is simil similar, and Russia was a major grower, supplier for hundreds of years. That is our fun tip for today. And then I've got a card as well for you guys. It says offer support and release control. And it says resist the tendency to advise and control others. Unlicited advice may ex exuberate rather than alleviate the problem. Know when to hold your tongue and just lend an ear. Today, just be kind. Um, um, listen to people's problem and don't react in anger don't let people make you angry but when you have to stand up for yourself then be angry so there's always a time to be angry and a time to breathe and just see the bigger picture i love you guys have a good day well said elsa so guys uh what a great episode that hour went by so fast and dave comes in we talk about james bond we talk about superheroes we talk about how the browns are in first place it's one of these amazing things that we get to have fun with dave i love that you're laughing in the back on that buddy good sport um so mandy atterbury helped me out and i i thought this was a phenomenal name for the enemy if we're gonna write if j dave's enemy is gonna write a book about him she came up with the best title the darker side of Dave. I thought that was phenomenal. Well done, Mandy. That helps us out with that. Kevin and Leah, Leah, thank you guys. Lena, thank you for being here today. Guys, this was a phenomenal day. We had a lot of things come. We've learned about dealing with anger in our own personal ways to how different superheroes, really their movies were broken down and everything like that. And Dave breaking us down on how a sports writer also flips it on its back and says, here's some other ways of looking at life and all this. So, I look at today and say, thank you, Dave. Thank you for being the light, the shining example of who we all want to aspire to be and looking inside ourselves. But I also want to thank everybody for tuning in today because you guys jumped on the comments. You guys dove into everything and didn't just have so much fun today. You guys are bringing the energy that gets all of everybody else excited and support one another. So please know this has been, this is my dream of seeing people just uplift one another and change the world in a better place by helping one another. So please keep being the change you want to see in the world and understand the world changing starts right in here, right there. Ah, thank you guys so much for everything and let's change the world together. Wow. That was great. Um, thanks so much for having me on guys. Um, it was a great hour talking with you. Um, as far as inspiration, uh, you guys said it all, but, um, I come across in my um, talk, talking to just anybody really um, telling them that I, I have a new book coming out and I've been asking for people to read it and review it. 
And uh, so a lot of people have said to me, wow, that's great. Um, I, I have a book idea, but I've, I haven't gotten around to it. Or oh, I'd love to write a book. Um, my inspiration I want to leave with you today is to motivate you to do something this weekend that think about, think about the thing that you've been wanting to do. It doesn't have to be a book or writing a book. Do something this weekend, accomplish something that you've been meaning to do for a long, long time, but you just keep putting it off. Make time for that thing this weekend um, and set a realistic goal to get that thing started. If it's a big goal, like writing a book, make an outline. Um, but if it's something else, you want to just do some writing, write a poem, um, do, do something that do something this weekend and finish something this weekend that you've been wanting to start, uh, for a long time, make, make time for that this weekend for me. Dave, you are amazing, even though you're from Pittsburgh and <laughs> honestly, Dave, you are honestly great I, I look forward to reconnecting with you again in the future because uh while we might not have time travel now you are always welcome back here anytime and i'm actually looking into i, I searched you to be able on sports illustrated so i can read some of your articles and all that oh, thank you. uh I, I i greatly appreciate you giving us time today and bringing it you're getting the loves you're getting the thumbs up uh i'm gonna go i'm gonna buy buy a, a recording studio she says i don't <laughs> that one caught me off guard uh and mandy tells me she's not just a pretty face because she helped me with the book idea uh but what a great show today you brought such a good thing guys phenomenal advice from dave uh come back anytime dave we'd love to have you uh guys spread love spread positivity and re remember we're all changing the world together by changing ourselves first bye guys have a good one bye thank you so much for having me anytime dave come back <laughs> <laughs> i will i definitely will